Holy crap, ladies and gentlemen, they did it. They actually did it. I wasn't expecting them to do this with the lore. And the reason I wasn't expecting, why is there a chair here? Ugh. Can you see the chair? No, the chair's gone. <laughs> that was that was unprofessional. I should have moved the chair prior to the video. I don't know if I'm gonna leave that in. If I do, congratulations, you saw some background content. Okay, so I didn't expect them to do what they did with the lore in this video. And yes, I know this is probably not what you care about right now. We are like on the cusp the night before. It's the eve of spoiler season. Things are going to get crazy, but I just need you to take a moment, pause, and understand that this set is connected to Monarch. And not just by like a single like thin line thread. They connected everything with this post. They connected absolutely every single thing with this post, and I'm going to show you how, and it, not going to lie, it, it floored me. It absolutely floored me. So by the way, if you haven't seen this post, this is on the website. You can actually go to fabtcg.com. This is called The Land of Legends. It's all about Aria. And we've seen some of this before. In fact, I read this very paragraph out to you if you watched the Aria kind of, not spoiler, what's the, what's the word, on um, the Aria lore video. Okay, I read this exact paragraph, and yes, I know things are being covered up, but I want the patrons to be front and center because you guys are awesome. Um, but yes, I already read this, but this part is brand new, and right here absolutely changes everything. I really wish I would have made the Demonastery lore video before this went live, because exactly what I was going to say in that, <laughs> it's, I feel embarrassed now, exactly what I was going to say in that is reinforced here. And we'll talk about the through lines and the threads that I was going to talk about in that video. I just never got around to doing it because it takes a lot of work. Anyway, we're going to talk about this one. So check this out. There are few that rec can recall the horrors of the Third Age before this Age of Man. It was a time when humanity stood alongside mighty ancients against the Aesir. Now, it's interesting, by the way, this is now the plural of Aesir, whereas in prior articles they just used Aesir. I kind of, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of like just Aesir. Uh, as, a, as like a lore junkie, I don't know. As the, against the Aesirs to defend this shattered world locked in great wars that had raged since the beginning of time. Okay, stop. This, right here, the ancients are fighting against the Aesir. Now, the word Aesir has popped up, and I don't know if I'm saying that right. The word Aesir has popped up a couple of times in the lore and what these creatures are are basically if you know lovecraft or lovecraftian fiction it's like the old ones are these um, extra dimensional beings these beings of great and immeasurable power that when you see them uh, because they are so um, beyond our understanding they you know just basically turn us mad that's in lovecraft that's what the old ones are that's essentially what it seems like they are going for with the aesir but things get really interesting when you actually find what in what article or at what point they referenced the aesir prior to this so let's talk about that very quickly i'm going to pop over to a different screen this is the character page for chain Everyone's favorite hero. You know you love Chain, okay? And when we scroll down, by the way, Chain looks like a villain. Do we all agree? He looks like a bad guy. But this proves, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that he's not at it with bad intentions. That's not the right way to say it. Look, it proves he's not a bad guy, even though he kind of, he's doing some terrible things. In the name of good, okay, watch, look. Deep within the Demonastery, the Disciples of Pain work to unlock the true bounds of human potential, their goal to free all of Wraith from the oppression of Solana. We don't know why they're trying to free them from the oppression of Solana, uh, and what specifically Solana has to do with, you know, what they're freeing them from, but we do know, down here, what he's doing. Chain is a gifted caster and researcher who wholeheartedly devoted himself to the pursuit of knowledge this is important. Having become an apostle of the Order, Chain is burdened with duty, unified with his brothers in their noble quest to protect humanity from the return of the Aesir, whose vast arcane power would quickly overwhelm the land of Wraith. Now, wait for it. After spending many months, 
researching and reading, he finally found the key. A whisper of powerful beings who could stand against the Aesir. Thus he and his fellow disciples have sought a way to weaken the old ones and harness their arcane energy to their own ends. Okay, just wait, just wait. We go down, and, and this right here is where it start, we start to realize that the things that he's doing by, like, attacking Solana aren't just because he's evil. I mean, even just up there it talks about it. But right here, it was when the gateway to Erathiel was opened and he and his brethren ventured through to the other side that Chain finally found the very power he had been searching for. A dark, ominous presence now conceals itself within his shadow, whispering in his ear, tempting him with greater power and the allure of forbidden knowledge. Even as he races to make this power his own, feeding and placating Urser, which we know of his token, with the souls of the light, he walks a razor-thin line on the very edge of the void. One wrong move and Chain's soul shall be lost forever. So basically, he, and this is, this is his lore, for some reason, he has discovered, and you can see this in his story, he's discovered some deep, long-buried secret as to a connection between Solana, the city of light and soul, and these Aesir, perhaps, okay? And these Aesir. And what he's done is he's gone and tried to research and finally figure out how he can help prevent the Aesir from returning and overwhelming the, you know, the world, which we saw at that, at that little blurb at the bottom there on the, the main page, okay? In order to do that, he had to get Viscerai to open the gate to Erathiel. Here's Viscera. He's opening the gate to Erathiel so he can venture into Erathiel, the internal realm of the ancients, which is interesting, okay, so that he could go into the darkest area of Erathiel. He could travel there and he could find this. He needed to find Urser. Urser is an Embra. He is an ancient creature whose raw power would lead them to the victory they desired. But so what he has to do, Chain, what he has to do is he has to take on the raw power of Urser, an Embra, and he has to make that power his own so that he can use that power to stop the Aesir. That is his goal. But in order to do that, he has to placate Urser by killing a bunch of people that have soul. <laughs> That's basically what that previous uh, little portion got to. Like, he has to feed and placate it with the souls of the light. So this is the connection between um, Chain and the Ancients. He's traveled to the land of the Ancients, the Arathio realm, whatever you want to call it. And he's taken Urser and his power onto himself. Okay, and it doesn't stop there. That connection is just connection number one. Here's connection two. So Eisenloft, the description of Eisenloft is right here. Eisenloft is a mighty citadel that overlooks the only passage into Aria. It stands proudly amidst the Eisen ranges that separate Western Aria from the rest of Wraith. Once the stronghold of the Order of Olin, Eisenloft was the first line of defense against the legions of the Void. And this is not talking about presently the legions of the void, which we see in Monarch. This is talking about um, the legions of the void before the Age of Man, the Third Age. Okay, so this was constructed, or perhaps it just served as the uh, first line of defense for Arya against the legions of the void, which continued fighting and had, the wars had raged since the beginning of time. You following? Okay. So we have this idea that... Arya was involved in these wars before some sort of like veil covered them and protected them from the outside world. I also want to take this moment to point out that uh, this right here, the element of ice and earth converge here in a breathtaking spectacle as the mighty mountain stretches up into the heavens against the harsh gales at the heart of Mount Isen. But then this part. At the end of the Third Age, Eisenloft was frozen by a tremendous burst of elemental energy. Its existence has since been forgotten by the people of Arya until recent times, when the ice that had enveloped it for centuries begins to melt and the Olin awake once more. So we see that 
a burst of elemental energy kind of locked this place down. But only now are things starting to melt and, you know, it's being rediscovered or awoken. This is important to note as we look at the lore that they give us for Candlehold. In Candlehold, we have this secretive grove that has been uh, locked in time. Uh, as you can see here, the Queen of Candlehold sits atop a throne of Elderwood as her mind wanders to the time of the Ancients. Her people, once mighty defenders, have fallen uh, from grace after the fall of the ancient Davnir, Father of the Earth, which we can assume is the um, the ancient, right? The ancient that is connected to this area. There are multiple ancients mentioned uh, in each of these things. By the way, I'll go up and just point this out. Uh, Volthaven had uh, Yvor as the ancient of lightning and ice, and uh, they talked about uh, the order of Olin. We can assume that Olin is the Ancient of Earth and Ice. Okay, so back down here into the uh, realm of Candlehold or the area of Candlehold, they've been trapped in this beautiful grove for eons, bounded and melded with this strail. By the way, the strail they talk about right up here, which is an aggressive, volatile version of the flow. Uh, just gets more aggressive, I guess, in this area. But a recent shift in the flow promises new hopes and challenges as the spell that binds them to their beloved grove begins to weaken, and the electric thorns and brambles that surround Candlehold begin to thin. So basically, we have in three different locations, or really I should say two, because they don't talk about Volthaven being like this, where it's just awakening. Uh, Volthaven appears to be actually used, but uh, we do see that like Eisenloft uh, up there and Candlehold are both being awoken. They are both being roused, and they both are connected to the Ancients as if someone or something is rousing the ancients. Are you getting it? Are you seeing the connection? Okay, cool. By the way, this art is fantastic, all the way through fantastic. We get to the crux of it all. In recent years, the barrier that once concealed and protected Arya is beginning to wane. We already knew that. The War of the Monarchs rages on. Aesir's and their Embras stir in their slumber, their influence seeping from Arathiel into the realm of man as the ancient defenders that lay dormant within Arya are roused by the presence of these ancient enemies and begin to awaken and gather once more. So, Rouse the Ancients was a card we found as a majestic in the Monarch set, and it was telling us exactly what is happening in this set. Because Chain and Viserai opened the door to Arathiel, and because Chain went to claim the power of an Imbra in the form of Urser. He inadvertently awoke the Aesir <laughs> at the same time, which was like the opposite, at least this is what it appears to be saying, which is sort of the opposite of what he wanted to do in the first place, at least it would appear that way, because he needs to, def he, his goal was to defeat the Aesir. And in doing so, he wanted to uh, gain the power of the Imbra so that he could go and defeat them. In Opening that gateway and releasing the power of the Aesir onto Wraith, that power has caused the weakening of the Veil of Arya and the subsequent rise and awakening of the Ancients, thus imbuing certain champions in Arya with their ancient elemental power. Are you getting the connections? Okay, because this... This was not what they talked about doing with the lore. They they specifically said in about an, a, an interview about a year ago, they said, we are going to tell stories about the characters. As far as overarching plot goes, you can take it however it will, but these are about the heroes. And we do see that, you know, the story here is about the heroes, but they've connected the world in a way that I was, I'm very glad that they have. And I am very excited to see what they're going to be doing as far as lore within this set. Because as you can see, this is very much connected to what is happening in Monarch. Which honestly, I was kind of worried about when they gave us a standalone Monarch set. And now they're giving us a standalone Tales of Aria set. I was wondering if they're just going to tell us little snippet stories. Or if they were trying to connect it into one larger narrative. And thankfully, in my opinion they are indeed connecting it into one larger narrative. And so that gives us the opportunity to perhaps see a, like an Avengers level team up with certain heroes 
trying to stop what is the big bad, the Aesir. This is really cool in my opinion. I think this is really fun. Uh, I'm loving the art, by the way. The art is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's like totally my aesthetic. It's right up my alley. And I am loving that they connected the lore. Let me know what you think about the lore in uh, this whole perspective. Is this tinfoil hatty? I don't think it is. I think these all connect and this is what they intended to tell us. And I'm really excited about it going forward. If you like this video, hit a like and subscribe. Do that thing that they tell you to do, as YouTubers tell you to do. Hey, you can make one number go to another number if you hit a button. That's pretty cool. You're pretty cool for doing that. As always, everybody, thanks for watching.